Okay, um, in the last video, we did a demonstration of the significant digit version and we saw the complexity of uh, performing this uh, sorting algorithm. Um, why does this work? Okay, this is important to talk about. Um, to see why does it work, uh, you know, it, 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 it initially seems bad for me that it should work when you're sorting by the least digit. But let's say you don't see the whole number, right? Which is what we kind of, we don't see the whole number. Right? We start with the smallest digit. So we have two numbers that have threes, and then two numbers that have fours, right? This is what would happen when you sort by the threes and fours. Now, let's say if there was only one digit, right? this is a 14, this is a 54, this is 23, this is 93. Okay, what's going to happen? When you sort by these, the 9, nine will go to the end, the 14 will you know, come up, and if 1 is less than 2, so 14 will come up before 23. Even though 4 is bigger than 3, but 14 will come up before 23. Okay, and so this will end up being uh, 14, uh, 23, 54, and 93. Okay, let's erase. This thing just now. Let's say this was a three digit number, right? So now this could have been a nine actually, and this could have been a one. One ninety three needs to go away up there, and that's going to happen. What's going to happen is let's say, let's imagine for now this was also twenty three. So they were they came next to each other, but um, uh, because this happened, this happens in a sta stable way. If this number if these are, um, sorry, uh, uh, this was sorted, right? So 14, 23, let's say, no, 23, 43, let's say it was 43. And if these are equal, then indeed this number is bigger than that. And it's going to remain there. So let's say this was both fives. What's going to happen now? The 193 will go to the top. The 523 will stay before 543 and 940 will come to the end. So this is just a little demonstration to convince you that it's not as baffling why it works, it actually indeed really works. One more thing I want to mention here, the idea of stable sort. This idea, uh, some algorithms when you implement them uh, using the basic idea of the algorithm are tend to be stable. So for example, uh, selection sort, if you write it carefully, um, when you bring the smallest guy, when you bring the small, first smallest guy, you keep track of it, then you bring it to the front, then selection sort will be stable under that uh, way of writing the algorithm. Uh, insertion sort is a little bit more tricky uh, because you have these swaps happening like these. Uh, no, is no, sorry. Insertion sort can also be made stable, you just have to make sure that when you move a thing back, uh, you don't move it any further back than when it runs up to equal number, okay? So it can be stable this way. Uh, merge sort and quick sort, you have to make sure what to do to make sure that the way we discuss quick sort in class uh, is not stable because when you swap things this way, a lot of things can uh, change their order unless you make a certain if clause there to make sure. Uh, why stable, uh, why we like stability in sorting algorithms? Great example is in Excel. Let's say uh, I have a student named with the first name begins with A, last name begins with S, and then a student begins with A, T, last name with T, and these are um, uh, uh, B, K, B, R, and so on and so forth. These are now, let's say, SBA students, SFC, SBA, SFC. This is an Excel, you have three columns. Um, first name, second name, or uh, family name, and school. If you sort by first name and then within the first name by second name, how, how would you achieve this order? You would achieve it by doing it. You should have sorted by the last name first, and then sorted by first name. And Excel, 
uh, it works, uh, the starting momentum uh, in it, uh, in many spreadsheets is stable usually. Um, now suppose you want to sort the schools within them, and within the schools, the name should be alphabetical. Then what you should have done, you should have first sorted by schools. Okay, so if you first sort by schools, um, no, sorry, um, you now sort by schools. Now you sort by schools, what's going to end up happening is that this SSE and this SSE, they're equal, right? But because AS came before BR, the AS name will be before BR in the new sort. And then you'll have, so you'll have SSE students, the two SSE students, the AS student, the BR student. And similarly, the two SBA students, uh, SBA students, and they will be in sorted order AT and BQ. Okay? So, you have to think about it, of course, which sort should you do first. So, if you want the students, sorry, I meant to say SBA should be first because alphabetically SBA comes before SSC. That's fine. Um, if you want the student names bunched by schools, and then within that they should be alphabetical, then you first want to sort by their names and then by schools. The other way around, if you want names alphabetically, and if two names are equal, like there's two people with the same name, exact same first and last name, then the and then you want the then within those names, the school name to come first. This is an unlikely scenario, then of course you have to sort by the schools first and then the names. Anyway, this is one reason that stable sort is something we like. If you want sortedness within groups, you have to do multiple sorts and you have to choose which order of sorts to do uh, by those two properties, depending on which property you want grouped and which property you want alphabetical. Okay? Okay, now we'll just do a quick demonstration of uh, the least significant uh, version of Redix sort using a physical uh, cards here. Uh, what I've done is I've made here some cards and these are numbers from 1 to 15 or 0 to 15, maybe a couple of them are missing. Uh, let me just explain any one card here. Um, let's say, let's look at this number. It's a 5. I have f 4 digits up here. And how does five, 4 digits allow you to write numbers from 0 to 15? Uh, 4, sorry, bits, 4 bits, binary bits. Um, how do you write a 5? It's a 1 and a 4, right? So it's a 0, 1, 0, 1. Wherever there are 1's, I have made the hole contiguous with the edge. It comes up all the way to the edge. And where's the 0? The hole is just a hole in the card and it's not contiguous to the edge. And in here, I also have, for example, multiple 10's and 4's, one 10 prime, and somewhere here's a 10. The 10 prime is behind the 10. So we'll see that the stability is maintained. I'm going to do the least significant, well, because I'm doing with base 2, this will be called least significant bit version, right? So, if I do it with the most significant one, like if I, if I were to pick the cards, all the cards that begin with a 0, uh, that, that begin with a 0, right? Since 0 is just a hole, when I do this with a stick, all the cards with 0 come out, and they should all go before the cards with 1. That makes sense. All the cards that begin, all the numbers that begin with 0 should be before all the numbers that begin with 1. But the problem is now when I do the second version, I have to do it in this bag separately and in this bag separately. Otherwise, I'll be mixing, as we saw, most significant bit version. It has to be a bucket sort. But I'm going to do the least significant bit version. So I'll start with the lowest bit. I'll start here. Okay, these are all the cards that have zero at the last bit. I put them here. Let's stack them back nicely. Then I go to the second bit. Just have to make sure I shuffle the. Uh, I'm sorry. I shake this enough so that some cards accidentally get picked up because I didn't do a good job of making the holes and the edges and things like that. I go to the third guy, the third bit. put them, all these should be before. Again, now if you look at the order here, okay, 0 is before, but right after 0 is like 8, right? So it's very unsorted. Um, but I have only one iteration left.
Let's see what we got. It's a, it's a zero. One, so far so good. Two, th three, four, and notice four before four prime. This shows you the stable because in the original, the four prime was behind the four at some point and it stayed behind it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, before ten prime. Again, same, this demonstrates the stability. 11 is missing, so 12, 13, 14, oh, something happened here, 11, uh, notice that this guy is bigger than 11, so 11 actually became uh, another version of 14, 11 and 14 are equal from the way the cards are made, and 11 was behind 14, so it's, a, so it's kind of a 14 actually, so we know that part because I didn't do a good job making a card, and 15 at the end, okay, that just shows you how least significant big version works. This was done with base two and okay.